We're now standing in front of the painting by Thomas de Keyser, a group portrait with three men. We just saw now, you know, when we were looking at Avercamp's painting, that clothing was a status symbol. The fact that you had beautiful clothes meant, of course, that you had to show them so people could see how rich you were. People also liked to see themselves eternalized wearing beautiful clothes. Their main concern, therefore, was to find a painter who was good at depicting different materials, that it would be clear on the painting just how costly and sumptuous the clothes were. And the great thing, of course, is that there were a number of painters in the 17th century in the Netherlands who excelled in this, but all in different ways. You had Rembrandt, of course, who seemed to model the paint and who gave us an illusion, a suggestion. Frans Hals could do that also. And then you had what I refer to as the, the fine painters, like Gerard der Borg, famous for its satin dresses, and Bartholomeus van der Hels, of course. But if you get close up to a painting like that, well, you can't always do that, but anyway, um, you realize it is just paint. Now look at the different fabrics in this portrait by Thomas de Keyser. The fabric of the sleeves, probably satin, is clearly different from that of the trousers and the jackets. You can also see here what kind of tricks the tailors used, because of course they made the clothes on your body. You went to the tailor, told him what kind of fabric you wanted, he then ordered it for you, and then he made your suit on your body, with you as the model. They hadn't yet developed all the techniques that I use today, so they weren't very good at setting in sleeves, for instance. So to conceal the untidy finish, they put caps on the sleeves, as you can see on the man here on the right. I assume that a sleeve like that would have been secured with a, a, a button or a lace or something. Well, talking about buttons, they were made by someone from a completely different guild, the Button Makers Guild. A button like that used to have a wooden center and then they would wind huge lengths of thread around it, by hand of course, which is why it's so terribly expensive. Embroidery was also done by other people, and the same applies to fur and so on. You had to wait months before the suit was finished. And these clothes may look dark and sober, but a jacket like this, in those days, cost the equivalent to 10,000 euros, because, of course, these clothes are comparable with today's haute couture. I just want you to bear that in mind when you look at paintings like this. And before we move on, I'd like to say something about the colors. A color like this, you know, like the man on the right is wearing, a rough color is about 13 meters long when you lay it out and is made of very fine linen. And what's even more interesting is that these colors had to be starched, of course. They didn't have starch in those days, so they used wheat flour instead. Unfortunately, at the time of this portrait, between 1620 and 1640, there were many famines. And while there may have been people dying of hunger in the streets, the rich people were infuriated by the fact that they couldn't starch their collars 